Hello YouTube, on today's post bag are uh, 8 parcels. Today's video will be a little bit noisy because I am right next to the GPU mining rig. Since most of these parcels are going to be related to the GPU rig, I thought I'll do them next to each other. Okay, so the first parcel is from China. It says it's an adapter weighing 70 grams and costs 6 cents. Inside the parcel is an adapter that connects two power supplies together. One only has two cables connected because they're not required on the motherboard. This allows two power supplies to be switched on at the same time. Each graphic card, when overclocked, consumes 300 watts, which is not enough for the 1300 watt power supply. So a second power supply is required. The next parcel is a parcel from China, which is marked as a commercial sample and it says syringe slash plastic tube weighing 85 grams and cost one cent okay so this is a 100 ml syringe with a plastic tube i think it was 80 centimeters it does say for single use and the ink has rubbed off this will not be for the mining rig and i'll show this in another video the next parcel looks like it's from hong kong and inside it says cell phone accessories china it's a gift it was 30 hong kong dollars the weight isn't mentioned, but it's quite heavy. I don't remember ordering a cell phone accessory. So this is the cell phone accessory. It's actually a bolt cutter. I think it handles up to five millimeters. It's an eight inch bolt cutter and there's some other items. So it's actually the mini bolt cutters. It has a lock at the bottom, which is quite difficult to remove with one hand. There's some kind of grub screw at the bottom for something. This was purchased because some of these screws are too long and I need to cut them so that I don't poke myself underneath when I put my hand underneath and that I don't catch any cables on these screws. On the front of the parcel it says sourcing mat which I think is a freight forwarder. The next parcel was sent to me by Royal Mail but I think this was from a Chinese seller because there is a Chinese label underneath. These items are PCI risers and this board is version 3. Oh it's actually version 7. It does have fewer components than the version 6C. I put them side by side you can see the difference. The 7 has a serial ATA connector and the 6C has the PCIe connector connectors which are better. The 6C came with these PCIe to serial ATA adapter. This adapter was heating up as well as this cable so instead of using these I went straight in from the power supply. So I will need to monitor the temperature around this connection to see if it's going to be an issue. The PCIe adapter is version 5. The next power supply arrived today and it's quite heavy. It was delivered by Royal Mail and underneath this label is another Chinese label. These parcels are from a Chinese seller who have a UK warehouse. You can vaguely see the Chinese writing underneath the label. The end of packaging has a date code of 10th of July 2017. Okay so I'm a little bit disappointed with this power supply. These power supplies smell like the burning when you first power them up and the fans are very noisy. This one does not look like the one I ordered so I'll be contacting the seller about this. But it is 1600 watts and it should be able to cope with the power requirements that I need. Okay so these power supply say that they are designed especially for or Bitconning or Litecoin provides stable power for your mining machine. It has a 90 plus gold sticker and I think it's supposed to be an 80 plus gold sticker. You don't get a 90 plus gold sticker. Also the listing was advertised as platinum. This can't be platinum if it says gold. There's a caution sticker on there. As sealed stick was removed, lost or damaged, it shall be out of warranty validity. Everything else looks in correct English. It also came with a Australian plug which is rated at 10 amps but I'll have to check if this is indeed pure copper cable or if it's aluminium clad. The next parcel has come all the way from Malta. The seller did advertise postage as 30 pounds. I asked if they could send it via economy delivery because I didn't mind waiting. That wasn't an option and I think the cheapest postage was indeed around 30 pounds. He paid 33 euros and five cents. Nicely packaged as if he was wrapping a parcel for a birthday present. I think the seller has has included either an invoice or their shipping document. So it's a packing slip and they purchased it from Digital River Island Limited. The seller appears to have a UK address as well. So this parcel is a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti graphics card. So this will be my sixth graphics card. This parcel is brand new. The seals are still on on both sides and it's the founder's edition. Inside the box is the documents. 
support guide, quick start guide and a welcome to gaming which includes a sticker that you do not put on your siblings hair or pet. Also in the box is a HDMI to display port adapter, in fact it's a display port to DVI adapter which has a locking mechanism. Here's the graphics card, the light on the top glows green and I already have one of these installed. It has good airflow at the back, it has a 8 pin connector and a 6 pin power connector. The next parcel is a Gigabyte 1080 Ti graphics card. I don't already have one of these and I'm hoping that the airflow is good on this. I think the seller wanted to charge £10 for the postage. I offered to pay the postage on the seller's behalf. He agreed to change the postage to £3 but instead it ended up in costing the seller £6.50 for a 1.4 kilo parcel which was sent as first class recorded. So inside the top box is a CD and a quick guide. There's nothing else in this top box. And here is the graphics card. It has three fans. Most of it is kind of shielded so I'm hoping none of the air will escape from the sides. The fin is slightly bent. It has an 8 pin connector and a 6 pin power connector. There's not much airflow at the front so this will be throwing air around the sides which isn't great for me. The next parcel is inside a UPS box which has come from Cardiff weighing two kilos and on the front it says that it's an MSI GeForce GTX Thai armor which I think is the same as this card. It's not very good as it throws the air around the edges rather than towards the back of the car. I'm sure I've seen this box before or it might be one of these cards. One of them is an armor card, one of them is an aero card. So inside the box is a small box which has a 6 pin to 8 pin adapter in case if the power supply doesn't come with one. Inside here we have a quick user guide, some stickers, some instructions, a CD which probably has drivers but I'll be using the ones from the internet, a registration card and here is the graphics card. Looking at this graphics card it has a cover on the fan so this would appear to be a brand new graphics card and in fact it is indeed like this one. So what I'll probably do is install this right at the end but facing the other way since I know the air is blown around the edges rather than towards the back of the car. It does say on the front of the box it's the overclock edition but you can set these overclock settings yourself. So currently the mining rig is making £13 a day based on four GPUs. If I add the other GPUs this should add up to £26 a day. As you can see the GPUs are exceeding the 250 watt rating. The GPU mining rig is making between £12 and £13 a day based on four GPUs. If I add the other four GPUs I should make around 24 to 26 pound a day. Current consumption is around £2.50 a day so that should double up to £5 a day in electricity bills. Currently doing about 730 solutions on Zcash. This should be around 750 that's so all I have to look into that. The algorithm has just, just changed to something else because the software thinks this is now more profitable. So shut down the GPU mining rig, connect everything up, try and make things a bit more neater and then power it up, install the drivers and hopefully have all 8 GPUs up and running. Ok I'm going to try and cut one of these screws using one hand. Ok so I've managed to cut the screw, it required a lot of force, maybe I'll get better at it. Ok so I've marked some of the screws and I've cut them, they only stick out a little bit but that's a lot better. Ok so that's the 8 screws that are holding the GPU at the top, almost the same size. Now to work on the PTI riser card screws. Ok so that's the 8 PTI riser cards screwed into the skirting board, repurposed skirting board. And the cards are slightly warped and that's because I'm using two screws and and it's on a foam backing but it shouldn't affect the performance there's not too much of a bend on the cards so this is a small problem I've got the motherboard connected and the CPU power if I switch the power on on the PSU the new PSU it spins and then stops but if I connect the green and black together on a newer PSU it powers up fine for some reason it's not liking the motherboard I wanted to put the new power supply onto the motherboard because there's a few more watts that I could use the 24 pin ATX motherboard splitter cable was £1.55 with £1 postage the seller had a 1% off promotion code so I paid £2.53 in total for this it allows you to have two power supplies onto one motherboard and it's perfect for Bitcoin, 
mining. It's 30 centimeters in length and it says it can handle power supplies under 2000 watts. But you wouldn't put 2000 watts on these cables. And there's a little bit here that you're not supposed to mix the power supplies up. So if a device has two sockets, you can't have the power from each of the power supplies. It needs to come from the same one. So the delivery price has gone up to £1.15 and this was from a Chinese seller XXY SM and here is the 1% off. The 100 milliliter syringe with 80 centimeter tube was £1.99 with free postage. This is a two gold brand. There's a few sellers with this branding name. It's a little bit cheaper today. It's £1.91. Seems to have lots of good reviews and this was also from a Chinese seller. Next is the mini bolt cutter. This was £4 and a penny. It's made out of metal and plastic and it's about 20 centimeters long. It weighs 27 grams and the maximum cutting diameter is half a centimeters. The brand is Move and Moving and this came from a Chinese seller called Netcell. The last two riser cards were £3.20 each with free postage. This came from a Chinese seller called Euro Wanuvi. This actually was dispatched from the UK. It does say it has four capacitors but I only see three. It also says it's four pin which isn't correct so the description is wrong on here and also it shows a black USB cable when mine came with blue. So here's a close-up showing only three capacitors so the description on this is wrong. So in the product description it does actually say there's three capacitors but it says the extension line is six pin maximum of 16 amps so the descriptions are all over the place so the only thing that's correct on it is the picture the second power supply was from ebay it's a 1600 watt power supply and it's 80 plus the price has gone up a little bit it's now 95 pounds and 99 pence free postage from the uk but this is a chinese seller the power supply does not look anything like what's in the picture it says it's for an amd miner maximum is 1800 watts which isn't correct but they do guarantee 1600 watts and it says it's power from Antec, which it isn't. It says it's 80 plus gold, but no real way of checking that. And it also says stealth wires, all wires darkened for minimal visibility. Well, that's not correct because they sent me a standard power supply. The sixth graphics card was the Gigabyte GTX 1080 Ti graphics card. This was £595 with £10 postage. I did haggle the postage down to £3. The seller advertised this as literally a mad good GPU and then list all the specifications. The seventh GPU was the Nvidia 1080 Ti Founders Edition. I won this for £550 and the seller was Zalgirinis. The seventh GPU was the Nvidia GTX 1080 Ti Founders Edition. This came from Malta from a seller called Gunner145 and I won this for £550 with £30 postage. The seller had to relist the item because a previous buyer had wasted his time. Perhaps somebody wanted to have it shipped to a different address, for example Bulgaria. This might be because the person's account that won the item was hacked by someone from Bulgaria. The person who hacked the eBay account would not have been able to also hack the PayPal account, assuming they use different passwords. He then lists all the specs. The 8th GPU is the MSI 1080Ti Armour Overclock Edition. This was £640 and a penny with £10 postage. I'll go to the spreadsheet and explain why I paid more for this, but it wasn't really more. It was £10 postage from Cardiff, and again I haggled on this postage price. The seller was Sis.88. The seller describes it as all retail box, brand new, never opened, still sealed, which it was, but for some reason it's put no invoice. So back at the spreadsheet, I'm not going to add the syringe, the mini bolt cutter or the power supply. The syringe and mini bolt cutter are not really for the mining rig and I could not use the power supply so that had to be returned. So the first item on the spreadsheet is the PSU splitter. The target price for this was £2.50 which is similar to eBay prices. So I got this for £1.55 with £1 postage and the seller had a 1% discount. I used my Amazon vouchers of £2.53 which means I got it for free and I saved £2.55 which is 100% saving. Next is the PCI riser the 7th and 8th one. The target price for this was £5 each, so that's £10. These were £3.20 each, so that's £6.40 with free delivery. I used my Amazon vouchers of £6.40, which means I got this for free. That's a saving of £6.40 or 100%. Next is the 6th GPU, which was the Gigabyte 1080 Ti. The budget was £600 and I won this for £595. 
The delivery was £10, but I haggled £7 off on this and got it down to £3. I had an eBay voucher. This was because I got messed around by a seller and I wasn't happy. eBay couldn't sort it out, so I got transferred to the concierge team and they will bend over backwards to keep you happy, even if it means they bribe you with some vouchers. I got 1% cash back and because I bought this after my deal on my credit card had ended, I had to use a different credit card. So I only got half a percent cash back on my credit card, which means I paid £564.19, which is a saving of £40.82 or six and three quarter percent. The seventh GPU was another Founders Edition 1080 Ti graphics card, £600 budget. This cost me £550 with £30 postage. I had £2.50 in Nexa vouchers. 1% back from top cash back and a half a percent from my credit card which means I spent £568.93 which is a saving of £11.07 or a saving of just under 2%. The 8th GPU was the MSI Armour so I now have two of these. This had a £600 budget. This cost me £640 and a penny with £10 postage. I think I haggled the postage down to £5 on this. I tried to haggle the price on this down to £2.69 but the seller wanted to use their own courier DPD which he never did. I think it came with UPS. He did however reduce the postage down to £5. I also had a £50 Amazon voucher and this is because I got scammed by an eBay seller. I did give the scammer a bit of a scare and I'll upload that in another video. The £50 voucher came from eBay's concierge service because I wasn't happy with the service so they transferred me there and they offered to give me £50 to keep me happy as the refund would take over a week to apply back to my credit card. I got 1% from top cash back and 1% from my credit card. I think this was bought on my American Express before the cutoff, which means I paid £582.66, which is a saving of £67.35, or just over 10%. So if I update my totals, I have spent £4,700, which is about $6,200, and I have about £230 left, which is about $300. If you've liked this video and found anything useful, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't done already, please subscribe and click on the bell for more notifications. And could you also like my Facebook page? And I'll see you next time.